Hello out there. Is anybody home? I'm just going to be talking to myself for a minute because I just went live just randomly for no apparent reason other than the fact that I get the question a lot. Like, Mark, how do you prep your pieces? So I just happened to be prepping a whole bunch of stuff for a client and I figured I'd go live and just blob it all over the place of what exactly I do. Um, so I'll give it a minute. Hey, Hannah. I'll give it a minute, see if anybody comes on. You can watch it live or you can play it back later. But the basic premise of this is I'm just going to walk through how I prep pieces. Um, primarily, it'll all depend on what kind of paint I'm using. And really, the basis for that is the experts who made the paint said use this kind of thing. So I use that kind of thing. Now, you come up with your own kind of methods on how, of course based on just trial and error and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, so for this particular set of pieces, it happens to be Annie Sloan. So I'm going to just stick to how I prep for Annie Sloan, um, particularly for this. But it's, it's pretty much the same, except for the other product I use to clean with. I'll go over when I get to it. So just wait for a minute, see who else comes on. I would say hi, where you're from, let me know who I got on here. Um, if you're just jumping on, I'm just, I'm just working today, and I happen to be finishing up prep on a piece, and I know I, keep, I get that question a lot, and actually in my Furniture Painting University videos, I don't go over prep a lot, um, just because it varies on you know, what kind of paint and how you feel like doing it and all that kind of stuff, but people will ask, so like, well, how do you prep? So uh, I just happened to be prepping and I thought it'd be fun just to jump on here live and kind of go over it, especially since I haven't been on here in a little while. And then I have something else to talk about at the end of this little live video. So what up, Scott? Scott from Atlanta. So who else is on here? Say hi, tell me where you're from, and then I'll get into it. And then again, if you're just jumping on, you can watch all this live or, uh, when I post it later, just, just me prepping, just doing what I do each day. I got fixer up around again, probably watched that episode 19 times. So not really too in, in, into the, the, the show. So I started thinking about prep work and then I'm thinking about people have asked. So I was like, well, let me just do a video real quick. So anyways, it's middle of the day. I'm sure everybody's doing stuff. So what we're going to go over is so, as you can see, this big, beautiful piece that I found, which I cannot wait to get painted and cleaned up, uh, is getting worked on right now. And if you kind of see, right now it's, it has this cloudy film over top of it. And I'm going to go over what the heck that is. But you can see, it's like this, just dirt, basically. Hey, Melissa, from Louisiana. So I got that going on. Yeah, I know, right, Hannah? This is probably one of the most solid wood pieces I've ever found. And when I say solid wood, usually there's parts of it that's not. No matter how much, you know, it's usually like 70% in wood, you know, you know, the back or the sides or something is not. But this thing is a monster and it is heavy and it is solid wood all throughout. And it's just beautiful. And my the client who, who bought this decided to do some silver highlights on all those beautiful carvings, which I can't wait to get to. So it's gonna be fun. So, anyways, I got that going on, and a desk over here that I got lifted up for right now while I'm cleaning and prepping it. So prep. So I'm just gonna go over the basic steps that I do. So this is for any Sloan. Uh, project well both of them are and it's just based on what the client had chosen from what I have on my page so what I have and I actually posted the prep work getting done thing the other night and somebody asked about the mineral spirits and that's kind of what prompted me to want to do a video so the initial step is just the cleaning step for me and I use mineral spirits for anything I'm doing with Annie Sloan prior to. And how that'll work 
is it just depends on I just got here how much have I missed Pat you haven't missed anything I'm just now starting this is me babbling at the beginning of it I'm just going over prep right now how I do it because I don't really go over it in my videos a whole lot and people have asked lately so uh, mineral spirits is what I use for anything I do with any Sloan's and it's just basically because when I first first started it was what I was told to use and since I started using it uh, it's been perfect for what I need it for as far as and I haven't had any uh, adhesion problems after I've cleaned using it and done proper prep so so what I do is there's a couple of different ways you can do it like you could just straight up you know, dip a shop towel in your mineral spirits and wipe it off. You could do that. But I like to give a little scuff to anything I do, whether it's an Andy Sloan project or a general finishes product, which is an acrylic base, where you want to give it a little bit more scuff than maybe an Andy Sloan's paint, you know, need for. But either way, I like to give everything a little scuff just to give it a little bit of something before I start painting it. So I'll take and one of the two things I like to use, and I, I probably mentioned this before, is I'll use one of these guys. And the one side is going to give me the scratch I want, and the other side is going to give me the clean I want. So what I usually have laying around is a cup, just like this, with some mineral spirits in it. And I'll take this little guy here, and I'll dip, get it good and wet. Uh, good enough where, you know, it, it may drip a little if I wring it out, because mineral spirits is going to dry. Uh, fairly quickly or evaporate I should say for fairly quickly so even if you have a little bit where it's dripping on your piece it's it'll evaporate and we're gonna get to the next step of that anyway but but not like like dripping dripping wet but like if I went like this to it and there was a little bit coming out then we still be good hey Jody so we're gonna take dip it in there wring it out and I'm gonna come over to my piece and what I do is I just I get it initially wet with the, the soft side. And then once I get it good and wet, I take my scratchy side and I'm just gonna scuff it and clean it. And if there's any like, you know, like this had some, like it had run into a wall or something, had like paint scuffs, you know, maybe it got moved and it ran into a wall, it had some scuffs. So I took the, the hard side and scratched that off and then just gave it a scuffing. Ultimately just, you know, giving, no matter what kind of, whether it's real wood or laminate or whatever, I like to give everything, when I prep, some type of scuff to it. So, you know, just, it helps, to me, from what I've experienced so far, is it helps with any paint, no matter what kind of paint it is, adhere to the surface. So, so again, I dip in my mineral spirits, I wipe off any, like, dirt or grime, and then I give it a scuffing. And a lot of times that scuffing side will also help with you know, any dirt or grime that's like kind of a pain in the butt to get off. So I use this, this is one thing I use. And like I said, I always have a bucket laying around or a little thing. And then if you keep it airtight, the mineral spirits will not evaporate. So you can just kind of throw a towel over it like that. And that's usually the way it sits like that in my studio, just like that. Now yesterday, I decided to use steel wool instead for my cleaning. This is another way to do it if you want to get a little bit more scuff to what, you're, what you have going on. And the reason why I did that was because on this particular piece I did have some, like, like I said, where there was some paint that was scuffed onto it and um, just a little bit more, you know, like grime or whatever you want to call it, dirt stuff, that I wanted to make sure was really gone. So I took that steel wool, dipped it in my mineral spirits, and then scrubbed it just like I would with this guy here. No different, same exact way. So that's what I did. So once I was done with that, I let it dry. And this is what you'll come up with. So if you're, I mean, if you're watching this and you're not new to what I'm talking about, you kind of know what I'm talking about, but this is what'll, what'll be the end result after using mineral spirits. It leaves this dry, like filmy residue behind, right? And that's basically the mineral spirits eating away at whatever oils or whatever it is that's on the surface and pulling it to the surface for you. And then I'm sure a little bit to do with me scuffing and having a little bit of, you know, the wood come up a little bit. So it might be a little bit of sawdust kind of thing too. 
But either way, it does it's basically the same for both. It's either the dust from the wood or the dirt and grime that you've got. Hello, yeah, finally got a live. Love all your videos. Oh, thanks, Lena. So, anyways. So that's what that looks like. So then you're like, okay, well, how the heck do I get rid of that, right? So your next step is once it's all dry, and Jody, I was just telling you about this, the shop towels are a staple, like, piece of supply you have in any studio because they're so versatile for many, many things. And for the most part are lint free, um, depending on how much wax collects on them. If you get too much wax that collects on them, it'll start to pull the fibers and then you'll start getting some on your piece. Don't, don't hesitate to throw it away. Use it until it starts to get gain too much wax and throw it away. This, that was for Jody. So for this particular instance, I got it wet, got all the water out of it, so it's still kind of a soaking, it's almost like a rag, and then I'm just gonna simply wipe off all this excess stuff, gook. So what should happen is once that dries, if I wiped it off correctly, it should stay this orange wood color. You shouldn't see any more of the white residue. If you see any more of the white residue, you wanna go through this step one more time and make sure you get all the, you know, just whether it's the dust from the wood or the oils and residue that was left over from, you know, years of pledging or whatever happened. You wanna make sure you get all that off ultimately because you don't want a barrier between your wood and your paint. You wanna have, you know, basically the cleanest wood surface you can get before you start putting the paint on. So. So you do that, and that's actually the step I'm on right now, is the cleaning step. So if you can look down here, I haven't got to that. I got to that part already. I'm gonna come over here and let's see how good I did on this side. So you can see, this side I already have cleaned, and there's no residue left over. Maybe a couple little spots here and there. Well, I'll go back over and just make sure. But ultimately, when you wipe it off with a wet rag, it should be a nice clean surface for you. And then your shop towel will get dirty as you start wiping. So make sure you, if you wipe, 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 wipe and still got dirt on it, don't go down here to wipe off more. Fold it and get a new spot because you're just wiping dirt back onto your piece. So try to keep it as clean as possible when you're going through this part when you're prepping because you really just want to like I said, get rid of that barrier of oil, grease, grime, dust, whatever it is, before you paint. And there we go. This, this thing's gonna be cool. I can't wait till this one's done to show you guys. All right, I'm gonna pull through here and see what I got. Let's see, do you use them dry or damp? If you're waxing, they're always dry. One time I get it wet like this is when I'm wiping off to clean or dipping it in mineral spirits to clean. But if I'm using it to wipe off the excess wax, it's always dry, always, always dry. Because then you're conflicting because wax and water don't go well together. Let's see, King Lake, do you wash the piece first before using mineral spirits? No, the first step for me is always mineral spirits. And I'll repost, I'll post this so you can see how I went through everything. Does this work for stained wood too? Stained wood. Um, as far as, I'm not sure what you mean, Pat. Um, if, I mean, if I'm going to stain it or if it's already stained, you have to help me out. I'm not sure exactly about that one. So anyways, so we got to that step. So we did the mineral spirits with a good scratchy surface, either a steel wool or the Scotch-Brite pad. Let it set, let it dry, let the mineral spirits do its job. and It'll bring all the gut to the surface. And then you get a damp shop towel like this and you wipe off the excess. Make sure you get all the excess, come back later after it's dried, make sure there's no more white residue. If there is, wipe it one more time. 
wait for it to dry, and then you're ready to paint. But you have to wait till it dries. You want to make sure to, for it to dry. Now, of course, most of the paints are water-based, so it doesn't really matter if it's wet, but if there's still residue, it's not going to come through. You're not going to see it until the, it dries. So that's the reason why you need it to dry first. Now, one little trick. So you see all these cracks and crevices? You're like, how the heck am I going to get a scotch Bright pad down in there to get all the cobwebs and nonsense? One of these guys is my best friend. You see it's all beat up because I used it a lot. So when I get, I need to get into these spots, I'll scrub it out and a lot, you could just dip it in the mineral spirits and scrub away and then wipe away the excess with, you know, your scotch Bright pad or whatever. But you want to get down in here because your paint's going to go in there. So you want to make sure it gets cleaned, you know, because a lot of times this is where you'll get the, the grime and stuff that'll kind of cake in and then you go to paint and then it doesn't stick and you're like, why is it not sticking? Darn you. So you just want to make sure that all this gets cleaned out real good. So just get your little brush. I wouldn't go um, steel wool or this is just plastic. That way you're not scratching away at the wood too much because you really don't want that. You just want to try to get out the dust and dirt and grime as best you can. And like I said, if you dip it in mineral spirits, it'll work wonders. Just and with all the detail of this thing, you can tell I had a lot of scratch scratching to do. And this is just, you know, proper prep to make sure the paint stays where it's supposed to stay. So that's pretty much it. I mean, from here, I will start painting and get this thing going. Uh, let me see here. Oh, how there we go, flipping it around, what up? So stained or painted is the piece stained. I'm on the phone. Uh, well, this piece, that I'm talking about right here is a stained wood. So I'm on my phone. Is the piece stained? Yeah, this is like a, a stained wood. So, and it wouldn't really matter if it's veneer or plastic. I mean, no matter what kind of surface it is, this is what I do. So, as an example, like here's the desk over here. And if this is a Bombay company, really nice solid piece and the top they have in this laminate stuff right you know because it's it's great for desktops well for this particular piece i knew you know no matter what paint you use if it's like that you want to give it some good scuffing so that's what i did and you can see it you got scuffed up real good so no matter what it is whether it's wood or laminate i do i run through the same process hey you know so, I don't know. Hopefully that's answering your question, Pat. If not, you can just shoot me a, a PM. Make sure I'm getting what you're trying to have answered. How long do you wait before cleaning up the mineral spirit residue? Okay, so the biggest thing is for it to dry. It's got to dry. And you'll, if like, I, I should have done a time lapse. So it would have been kind of cool to show you guys what happens to the mineral spirits. Because if, if you're new and you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, if you've already done this before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But the mineral spirits will dry, and as it dries, the liquid part of it evaporates, right? And then whatever it does chemically, I'm not that smart, it pulls the dirt and residue and stuff to the surface, which is what causes the, the cloudy, you know, mess that shows up when it's all dry. So you have to wait for it to dry. So that's a key part because if you don't wait for it to dry and you're like, oh, it's wet, I'm water-based paint, I'll just paint over it. Well, you're painting with some of the dirt and residue that's still there. So wait for it to dry. Wait for it to look like this. And it should. Sometimes it won't, though. Maybe you don't have any dirt or residue on your piece and it doesn't have a big cloudy film. But still go to that next step. Still go to the step where you wash this off with a wet rag, regardless of whether you see it or not. So... One clear, scratchy, scratchy mineral spirits. One wiping off of the residue, whether you can see it or not, with a wet, uh, wet damp shop towel is what I use. And then, again, wait for it to dry. You know, even if you think, oh, I got it all, just wait for it to dry. Give it the time. Give it an hour or two or whatever it takes. Hopefully, you didn't get that wet. It takes an hour probably. But just give it the time because if you go back, even after the wet shop towel step, 
and there's still residue on there, you don't want that. You don't want to be painting, you know, your wood over the residue of whatever it was. It could be pledge or grease from people's, it could be a number of things that's going to stop your adhesion of the paint, which is where the proper prep is key for a long lasting finish. So if you want the finish to last for, you know, a long, long time, you, you kind of want to go through the right steps. So that's kind of what you want to make sure when you're painting that you're painting directly onto the surface and not onto a surface with a layer of something over it. So does that make sense? Hopefully. So anyways, let's see. There's 35 people on here. Does anybody have any questions about prep while I'm on here? I got one other thing I'm going to talk about. But I figure I'll take some questions too before I have to get back to it. I got to go get the kiddo in a couple hours. So I got to try to get these things prepped up and ready so I can start painting probably tomorrow. This will be so much easier. Thanks so much. Hate sanding. Awesome. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Have I ever sanded? I don't think I ever have. I I was blessed enough to, when I started this journey, that I went straight to an Annie Sloan stockist. And they were awesome. Um, nice old couple, Black Swan here in Lakeland. And they really walked me through this process. And I've used it since then. Now, you know, I've taken on the scotch Bright towel and the steel wool and a couple other little things that they didn't mention. Because I'm, I'm thinking through the scuffing part. Okay, well, I want to scuff and clean at the same time because A, it saves time, and B, you're, you're accomplishing the same goal without having to do it in separate steps. You're accomplishing the scuff, so that's why I do it the way I do it. But, uh, so yeah, I, I don't sand down the wood. Um, that's kind of how it all started, really, because when I wanted to paint that thing for my wife, there would have been no way I was stripping and sanding and doing that whole thing because... Ain't nobody got time for that. So just proper cleaning, scuffing. You know, if you know if you feel like you need to sand it, just hit it with. You know, you don't have to sand it, sand it. Just like scuff it with you know a, a fine grade sanding paper. You know, and I actually did that on the top of the desk. I just scuffed it real. I mean, real quick, but just with a fine grade sandpaper, but not like sanding, like getting my orbital out and going to town on it or anything like that. Are you going to stain the top of the desk? No. She wants the deep ocean for that one, which is super popular right now. Those deep blues, um, which is pretty cool. So I'm, you know, I'm enjoying that. So yeah, that's going to be deep ocean. So the dark navy blue with the black. Love the gray piece with the black glaze. Can you do a tutorial? The gray piece with the black glaze. Sylvia, which one are you talking about? Gray piece with a black glaze. I don't know which one you're talking about. I've done a lot of video. Almost every finish I have, I've done a video for. So let me know if you can shoot me a picture of which one you're talking about. I'll let you know if there's one already done or not. TL Muncie, what up? Black Swan, they were great. Yes, they were. They were, they're just the nicest little couple, man. Every time I go in there, I'd be like, deer in the headlights, look. <laughs> you know, and it's almost two, it was actually two years ago, like uh, last week or the week before, that I got my first can of paints from them and sat there in the back. And it was supposed to be a family affair, and it ended up being all about dad because mom and Maddie kind of drifted away somewhere else in the store. And so I'm like, really? Oh, I can do this? I can do this? And I was getting all excited because I love to paint, so it was kind of cool, you know. I got to do like painting stuff that people might actually like so I was thinking through like at the moment I'm gonna be able to do this for my wife and she's gonna love it it's gonna be awesome so I was trying to absorb it all to make sure I did it right ultimately at the time but they were they were awesome they walked me through the whole thing and I'd go up there bug them every once in a while and then they shut down they retired to be more available for their kids and their grand I think it was grandson um, but they're where it all started I actually still have a bag from them that I'm gonna keep forever I use it for my giveaways. Just tuned in, like the scuff and clean at the same time idea. Yeah, it, it's worked for me. Some people say sand, then, then, you know, do the tack cloth and then clean. And I haven't had any problems just not worrying about 
the sanding part as much as the scuffing, scuffing your surfaces, especially with the paints that are out now. They all adhere really, really well, you know, each at a different level, you know, especially when it comes to distressing. Some are like glue where you can't distress them real well, and then some give until you talk home and then they're there forever kind of thing. I missed the beginning. Adele, don't worry. I'm going to post this when I'm done. I'm just being a nerd. I was working and I thought, hey, maybe somebody might want to know a little bit about this stuff because I've had some questions. Sorry, I missed the beginning. So how do you apply mineral spirits just with Scotch or Brad? Yeah, uh, I, Aisha? I'll make sure I'm trying to say your name right. Aisha, because I hate when people murder my name. Um... I, I went over all that at the beginning. I promise I'll post this as soon as I'm done, and you can flip through it. Um, looks like driftwood almost. It's a dresser. Um, is it? I don't know. Sylvia, just um, do me a favor. Do a screenshot and just shoot me a PM, and I'll let you know for sure because I'm not sure exactly which one. Looks like driftwood. It's the one that I just posted. I just did the video for FPU, and it just got posted this week, which I'm excited about. I haven't posted on my page, or maybe I did. I think I did, that it got posted finally, because that was a fun one. Over the winter, I did some different wood finishes I was playing with, and I did one desk. That's the Rustic Barn door finish I did a video for, and while I was doing that, inspiration came for the lighter colored version to make it look more like like driftwood, like literally wood that washed up on the shore and sat there forever and got sun drenched. That's kind of where that one came from. So is Deep Ocean a wise owl paint? Now Deep Ocean is the name of the finish. Because I'm married well, my wife is the brains of the operation and she said from the very, very beginning, like the fifth or sixth piece in, she's like, you should name your finishes. And it was genius for a multiple of reasons. Um, main reason being, it's easier for me to communicate with my clients when I say, oh, which one would you like? Oh, I'd like this one. Oh, it's deep ocean. And they know, and I know, deep ocean means it's Annie Sloan Napoleonic with clear wax and black wax, and usually a textured look with some, um, you know, crackle a little here and there and that kind of thing. So, but that's, I can't even take credit for that. It was all my wife. She was like, you should name your finishes. And she was even helping me with naming them at the beginning. And I still ask them sometimes when I get stuck on what to name them. I'll ask them, bug them, and they'll help me figure it out. So, so that Deep Ocean is the name of the finish. And it's Annie Sloan products, which most of my finishes are because I spent the first year and a half only using hers. And then, you know, a couple months later, I started using GF. And then a couple months later, I got into Wise Owl, um, Dixie Bell, and Designer and You, which I haven't finished like doing a whole lot with. But hopefully, when I get the move and get settled, I have a lot of Designer and You stuff ideas that I want to do because the Designer and You is another 100% acrylic, which is a lot of fun to play with because it's just different. It has a different um, different uses you can different things you can do because of, it's an acrylic. And uh, so definitely something I have lots to play with that I want to play with, but haven't had really time to while I've been here right now. Let's see here. I'll find it. PM you? Good. It sounds good. Yes, Aisha, you didn't. I didn't murder your name. Yes. Oh, yes. As that commercial goes. That's the running joke around the house is that I think it's a Geico commercial where they're happy about bad things happen and the lady goes, oh, yes. What's your favorite top coat for high use tables? Okay, good question. So I, for, for like the first, it wasn't even, well, it was about a year, I never used any polys at all. And then Rebecca asked me to do a copper finish, which made me have me try some GF stuff. Well, then I used GF, uh, High performance top coats on a couple of things before I got to the copper thing and I use that for all my high traffic areas and then that was pretty much it so the high performance top coat from GF was it 
and then I started using Dixie Bell and Wise Owl. And both of them have great products as far as top coats over um, paints for high traffic areas. Dixie Bells, I love their names. There's this Gator, Gator Hide. I'm still trying to remember the names, so don't kill me if I don't remember them correctly. Gator Hide, or I think that's, let me, I have to look now because I'm feel stupid. I don't know the name of it. Yeah, Gator Hide. Yes. Oh, yes. I named it right. So they have Gator Hide, and that stuff is like rock solid stuff. I've used it a couple times before already and love it. It's great stuff. And then Wise Owl has their varnish, which I love too, and I've used on multiple things. Um, let's see, two different vanities I've used it on. I've used it over wood. I've used it over paint. I've had more opportunities to play with that one just because of the pieces I was doing I went with theirs. There wasn't any real reason, but um, but those are the three. So Gator Hide, and they actually have clear coat top coats too, but they recommend that one as their tough one. So if you're looking for a high traffic area, I would probably use that. And I think I'm going to paint that pedestal table and do it in Dixie Bell, and I'm going to use the Gator Hide on top of it for that when I get done with it. And then Wise All has the varnish. And they have matte and satin. Uh, matte's pretty matte, and the satin I enjoy quite a bit because it gives it just the right sheen, not too much, just in the right. And then, you know, GF has the high performance top coat. I usually use the flat because the flat already is more like a satin because it has a sheen to it. The flat out flat, from what I understand, is not as protective as the high performance top coat because of how it's made. I, I could get into the specifics of I had it written down in front of me, but I couldn't regurgitate it. But the high performance top coat, either flat or satin, would probably be the way I'd go. Um, I've only used satin once. I really enjoy the flat because it's already has a sheen, but not a shiny kind of sheen to it. So I never went up to satin. I, I mean, what I have over there is just flat right now. Okay, let's see here. Do, 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 do. What's your favorite? Hi. Hi, Teresa. Best tip for smooth application of top coat, especially not flat. Um, Shoot, I could do a whole video on that. That's one of the th biggest things I think people have asked me about from like when I started using polys was how the heck do I do it so smooth and flat? So I will wait on that one. For an, another video, Pat, um, just because that will take some time. And I actually was already thinking about doing it. And I have a piece that needs a top coat. So I might actually just go over it. Like do a, like a, maybe a fly in the wall Friday thing. And go over how I do it and how it gets used. And basically it would be the same no matter what product I use. So, so I'll hold off on that one. Just because that's another whole topic that I could get into and really explain more in detail later. Hey, Karen. Do you brush them or wipe them off? Do I brush? Aaron, what, what do you mean? Do I brush the top coats? Sorry, I'm trying to scroll and catch up. So I'm assuming you're talking about top coats. If you're talking about top coats, again, we'll get, I'll do a whole nother video on how I do it. There's a million ways. I can just show you how I do it and the success I've had with it through trial and error and why and then so i'll do that later aaron have you tried fusion mineral paint tough coat if so what does okay fusion is probably one of the only big names that i have not tried and i i honestly don't know why i mean probably because i was a big annie guy for the longest time and then you know being an instructor I, I had to start venturing out and trying other things because I didn't want to just, like, all my finishes were Annie, Annie, Annie. Then if you don't use Annie Sloan's, how the heck do you do my finishes? So I, when Rebecca first asked me to do something outside of that, she started that going. And then thankful to Karen from Wise Owl and Suzanne from Dixie Bell who sent me some products to try and then not too shortly after Francine from designer and you sent me some products to try 
So I, I got opened up, like my eyes wide open to a whole nother world of paint funness. And for me, it's twofold. I'm an artist, so I love to paint, and I don't, I don't wanna have to be constricted to a kind or like, I don't know, there's a lot of brand loyalty, and I get that, but I'm just an artist, you know, and an instructor on top of that. So the, my view of it is the more paints I have, the more products I have, the more things I have, the more creative I get to be. And from that, the people who pay money to go support me as an instructor at FPU get better finishes, better ideas, better creativity, because I have more out there that I'm testing, playing, and using. And, and oh, by the way, if... You know, if you don't use the products I use, maybe next time I can do a video for you in the products that I, that you do use. So, you know, just open up quite a bit. So, but Fusion, I don't know why, is just not one I've had. Probably because I had an influx of new ones come over the last six months, seven months. But I, so I don't know. I don't know how to answer that one. Um, I know a lot of people that use Fusion. I can probably answer that better than me. Um, sorry. Karen, some use a sponge, but I use a Klingon flat. Yeah, it just depends. It depends on what kind of finish you want. I've not, I've never used a sponge, not yet, um, to do a top coat. So that would be a new one for me too. How many coats of wax do you rec recommend applying? Uh, I normally only do one. I've heard people do one, wait a couple days, and do a second if they feel like it's necessary. I've never felt like it's necessary. I, any, any of the waxes I've used, from Annie to Dixie Belle to the fabulous, I mean, if you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen this piece. This is the hemp oil. Look at how matte that is. It's, that, it's the hemp oil furniture wax. This is black. And I just did one coat of black. And it turned out so, so pretty. It's sold, but the lady hasn't picked it up yet. So it's still sitting here, but I wanted to show you just... Again, there's so many options of things out there. I, I never used anything hemp oil before. That's my first try, and it came out so beautiful. So it's just like, okay, that's another option I have, right? You know, so... Anyways, going down rabbit hole, but bottom line to answer your question is... I've only done one coat ever... I've never ever done two. If it's a high traffic area, like a desktop, tabletop, I do stew poly. And polys are usually three to five coats, depending on, you know, how much, you know, protection you want. And that's, a, that's the thing that kind of sucks about poly is it's like one coat of wax or five coats of poly. So, and I don't know, there's some hardcore wax people out there. They're like, that's why I use wax. But, you know. It's to each his own. Whatever you think is going to be best for your finish, for your protection, for your clients that you're having them pay money to. To me, and it's based on my own personal experience with doing something for my own house on high traffic areas, I do poly. Period. Dot. End of story. And I'm not going to go into a rabbit hole more specifically than that. I can just tell you from personal experience, I do it because it's better based on what I understand, what I know from pieces of you know, I have in my own house. And if I'm going to sell it to somebody, I want to make sure it lasts and is the highest quality, whatever possible. So, okay. So where is the link to your finished tutorials? Um, I'm an instructor on Furniture Painting University. So you can go, you can go into my, well, let me see. Huh? You can just go to furniturepaintinguniversity.com. Um, but if, you want a more specific to just mine, I have my own section. I can shoot you a link. So if you want to PM me, I can shoot you a link to that. Um, your top coat. So, okay, Aaron, so you were talking about, do I brush them on or wipe them on? So I don't brush on top coats normally unless it's in like cracks and crevices. So for this, crazy nonsense right here. If I was to, to poly it, that would be a brush. And I usually use one of the Klingon um, round brushes, usually. 
and I'll just I'll jab it in there and then I'll nice and neatly pretty it up afterwards. So but on large flat surfaces like that, I don't brush them. But again, that'll be I'll do another video on that. Like I'll actually show you, like I just walked through this. I'd say fusion better get with the game and send you some products. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be cool. Anybody knows somebody from Fusion wants to send me some products. I'm more than happy to try them out. Uh, hemp oil looks very interesting. Is it a particular brand? Heather, that's Wise Owl. And she, Karen over there, is very, 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 very health conscious. And one of the things I kind of dig about her products, although if you have a particular kind you're used to hers will be a little different because of that so that's where my learning curve came and honestly my hesitation with using it because i was like it's not what i'm used to but i'm so glad i just took the leap on this piece because it really came out beautiful so you just have to go to their website and you guys know i have a discount code for wise owl so my present to you guys if you want to get a discount it's just refurbished gentlemen in all caps so just go to their website, and it only works at their website. But if you want to try it, I would. Um, just step outside your comfort zone a little bit. If you're not used to a hemp oil furniture wax, try those. Try the sa the salves. I said it right. Salves are amazing. I haven't used them as a top coat over paint yet, but I definitely have used them on wood. Another amazing product. Have you heard or used polyvine matte finish varnish? I've heard of it but I've not used it. The only top coats I've used are associated with the paints that I've used. Uh, so I've used designer and used poly. I've used the, the waxes and polys from Dixie Bell, the varnish and now hemp oils from Wise Owl, and then GF's high performance top coat, which is their poly acrylic. So I've used those. And just like I said, when I try a paint, I'm trying to try all their products for, like, like I mentioned earlier, multiple of reasons, but primarily just to test them out, see how they are. And then if I use a product's paint, I like to use their top coat, usually. Um, when I first, first started and I was doing top coating over Annie's, it was all GF at that time. Do you ever use extender in top coat? No. I've never used extender in top coat, but I absolutely use extender anytime I use GF's uh, glazes because glazes suck sometimes. They dry so fast. So you definitely need something to keep the open time longer so you can play more. So definitely, for sure, for sure. And they are very nice at Wise All. Oh, yeah. Karen and Aaron are the best. If you haven't had interactions with them, um, you should, because they're just good people. And I'm excited because if you didn't know, I'm moving to the St. Louis area. My wife's from Michigan, which just happens to be where Karen and Aaron are. And we're going to try to make a trip up there to just say hi, play with some stuff. You know, I haven't been able to use a lot of the, the products as much as I would want to. Maybe we can sit and play and try some stuff out while I'm there. I don't know. It just depends on how long we're up in Michigan for, but... Yeah, they're really good people. That, and I can tell you, you know, um, your relationship with the company a lot of times can cause problems or could lean you another way. So if I, I worked in customer service job for 20 years in the military, and it was ingrained into us, like ingrained into us about customer service and all that kind of stuff. And that's one thing that they do very well. Um, they really have a passion for what they're doing and uh, it shows in everything that they're doing over there. And I felt the same way when I went to Dixieville. I couldn't have had a better experience than I, than I meeting the company owner in person. Like they invited me over and sat and showed me stuff with Suzanne herself. I was like, what? I felt like big Bala for a minute. You know, like she like took the time out of her day to, show me products and left me with a box of stuff to go play with. So that was really cool. So, and those kind of things leave a lasting impression.
it does for me. You know, like how awesome they were to me makes me want to, you know, use their products. If, you know, as long as I feel like they're high, high quality, which they are, I'm going to use their products and blow them up as best I can. Just out of sheer appreciation for the fact that they were so nice to me. You know what I mean? So, yes, customer service is everything. I totally agree with that. I mean, the products have to be there. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, if you meet somebody in person like I did Suzanne and Terry over there, and they were just as amazing as they were, it goes a long way. And same thing with Karen and Aaron. I've only talked to Karen on the phone and Aaron via Facebookness, but she's been amazing. And then even Francine and uh, oh, I'm going to forget the other name, Elena, I think. I'm really bad with names, but from Designer and You have been just amazing too, you know. And then Unfolded got a hold of me lately, and we did the whole Unfolded Insta story, and they were just, I mean, super nice. Like, they couldn't wait to to show showcase my work, and I was like, holy cow, really? This is awesome. Especially after, like, that was the one I used for the first year and a half of work, and, you know, to be recognized by the, the big dog company that you know, does it, makes it, sells it, puts it out to everywhere in the U.S. That was, that was pretty cool. Um, definitely a humbling uh, experience to have them reach out like that. So, but anyways, any other questions? Any other things? I'm going to post this for anybody that jumped on late. Basically, it was just me babbling on about how to prep a piece because I was prepping some right now and I thought it'd be fun to kind of share. But before I get off, the last little bit I wanted to share is I know I said no giveaway until 8,000 followers and we're shifting from likes to followers because I'm understanding more of how Facebook is going. That's where they're going with things as followers. So likes and all that stuff is great, but the followers are the people who are actually getting the information that I'm putting out, right? So we're shifting to that. With that being said, you know, we we're close. Well, we we're moving pretty good with the followers and then 7,000 hit faster than I thought we were going to. And I was thinking, well, we probably wouldn't get it until we moved. But with that being said, I'm going to do a giveaway. So what am I going to do for the giveaway? So I found a piece for local people. If you've sat through this whole thing and you're local, I have a, it's going to be a small giveaway, not as big as my normal ones, but I'm still going to do one. I have a piece that I'm going to paint and uh, just a nice little piece. It's a Bombay company, nice little piece. You have to wait and see. And then for my artists out there, um, we're going to be working with Wise Owl once again to share some seasonal color love with y'all. And I have a little present that I'm sure you guys were going to like to have. So I'm going to sneak in here. If you don't have one of these, I might. I happen to have a couple laying around, and I thought, you know what would be fun? As if I gave away one of these. So who would like one of these pretty little amazing brushes? So if you're an artist out there and you're wondering what the giveaway is going to be, it's going to be this little guy right here, which is my favorite brush currently. All right. And then we're going to do a quart of any one of the new seasonal colors. Yeah, right, Heather. Me, me, me. So, so I'm partnering with Wyazal again for this giveaway. So she's going to do a quart of the seasonal colors for the paint. And I'm going to do one of these things from me to you guys. Just a little present, present. Right? I know, I know. These things are hard to find, too. I know you want one. Who makes the brush? This is a Klingon. This is their S50 Shorty, they call it. And it's got this cool little dipped paint thing. And it's 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 like a mix between a flat and an oval, sort of, when it's not flattened out like it is right now. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty awesome little brush. I like it just because of how it holds. I hold it up here like this most of the time. I don't know, it's a cool brush. And when I first got it, I didn't realize it was a, a, a thing, but I guess it is that because it, it was new and I hadn't used Klingons before when I first got one. 
and now I guess they're kind of hard to get currently. So I thought that would be kind of fun since I know they're hard to get and I have a couple laying around, haven't opened up yet, I'd give away one of those. So that's what we're going to do. So for, it's my 7,000 followers, two year anniversary coming up on the 25th of April, which I'm super excited about. So I've already blown past 7,000. So the 25th of April will probably be when the giveaway happens. Maybe, maybe not. So I'm going to do a post about it what you need to do. I'm partnering with Wiseall again, so I'm gonna ask you guys both to share, or uh, like my page, follow my page, and like and follow Wiseall's page for you know part of the contest rules. Same kind of thing we did before. And then you can pick a quart of one of their new colors. If you haven't seen their new colors, I would go check it out if I was you, because there's like four that I absolutely fall in love with because they're blue. Blue, more blue for me like I need more blue but some of them are amazing so anyways that's what we're gonna do and then for my local people should I just show you I think I'm just gonna show you this is the piece I picked up this morning Ooh, yeah. Check it out. so for my local people this is a Bombay and company little side table really pretty and check out the hardware you know I love me some hardware check that out cool right and I am going to paint it though. Normally I'll let you guys pick, but this time I'm gonna paint it. And I'm gonna use one of Wise Owl's new seasonal colors, or maybe two, we'll see. I don't know yet, but I picked that up. Just specifically for the giveaway, I've been looking for something that would be, you know, nice high quality something, but not something huge, because as you can see, the studio is full of stuff. So I don't have much room to do much else right at the moment. So that's what's going on. So we're gonna do a giveaway. It'll probably be right on the anniversary date or sometime around there. I'm gonna post something today about what to do, how to enter, all that kind of stuff. So again, if you're local, it'll be that little side table. If you're an artist, it's gonna be the S50 Shorty Klingon brush. And no, I'm not sponsored by Klingon or anything. I just, I just like the brush. And I know people, other people like it, and a lot of people haven't been able to get one for whatever reasons. So I just thought it'd be fun to give one away because I know it'd be something you guys would like to have. Because it's hard, like, I don't know, like you probably have a ton of brushes, but maybe you don't have this one. You know, or if, you know, you, you haven't tried Wiseau yet and you want to try it, and now they got all these cool seasonal colors, now you can pick one of those, you know, so just... Jumping outside your comfort zone a little bit, like I did. That was my first real use of a Klingon brush. And then it kind of ventured off into the flats and the ovals and all that other kind of stuff. So, what size is my studio? Sandy, you would laugh, but it's in my house. So, it's the front formal living room, I guess. I don't know, these floor to floor plans or something else. So, you walk in my house. Like there's the double doors and you walk in right to the right and it's just the room my wife was so lovingly nice enough to let me totally ransack. And then the one behind me, one behind me is set up like staged blah, for, cause we're selling the house, but it, I had that side too. So I had all that. And then if you go back, back air, back air, that's my office. So I have an office. And I have two workspaces that I had because normally they're both full of stuff. And they probably would be now, too, if I had the room for it. But we had to start staging for the house. And the realtor and the wifey said, okay, you can still paint, but not the whole house full. So, so I had to narrow it down a little bit. All right, let's see who else is on here. Cute table, super cute. Hi, Bobby from Oregon. That's where I used to paint too, yep. It's good, it works. And the new space I have in St. Louis in the house, I'm gonna have a little bit more room. Although it's a it's a two story, so it'll be downstairs with a walkout basement and then you gotta walk up and around. So it'll be a little bit of a pain. Probably have to get a dolly, but. Paint Pixie, what's up Paint Pixie? Wise Owl has some beautiful colors. Yep, they sure do. I tried out one of Paint Pixie's brushes too. Pretty awesome. You definitely try those out. 
When, when you're ready to make a bigger one, please, please let me know. Because I know, I like, I want, I want one that's bigger. I like that it doesn't shed. I like how it spreads. I like all the things about it. It's just a little bit small for me. And when I use, when I use these, I do small areas. But when I do big stuff, I like my big, thick, round brushes. So if you can make a bigger one for me, that'd be cool. I know I bugged her about that already once. That's the exact setup the turquoise iris has in her staging space. It's her formal dining. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. Glad I'm not alone and using inside the house. Yeah. There's no way I could do it here in Florida. There's just not enough space. Going through the same thing, getting the house ready to sell, moving from Illinois to Florida. I'm just across the river from St. Louis. Yep, headed that way. Boss is still military. Or they asked us to move one more time. Uh, hope, hopefully, that'll be it. So, but yeah, that's what's going on here. Just trying to get through some stuff. These two pieces I had were actually in my unfinished inventory. I was going to paint them. I had specific things set up. I even had one painted and prepped. And I had a client contact me, and they asked if I had certain pieces and they just happen to be the pieces I had in my unfinished inventory. What is your, oh, let's see. Hi, going to Italy next month to see the manufacturer. What number is your, any, is it your any Sloan that you like? Oh, so here's what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So here's the paint pixie one. Which, if you haven't used this, it's awesome. It's a mix, it's like a hybrid, and doesn't shed. It's an awesome, awesome brush. It's just small. That's that's my only, only complaint. And when I do big projects, I like to have, let me see the brush, see how much bigger this bad boy is? I like to have one of these big, and my reasoning behind that is when I go flat, and it spreads, the spread is wider, and it holds more paint. And that's been my experience. Now, I gotta deal with the shedding, which sucks. I'm not gonna lie to you. But, you know, you take the good with the bad based on how you utilize your brushes. Um, so, I still use those, because I, I like them. I just wish they didn't shed like they do. So, you can see I got a whole array of brushness in here right for all the different kind of things that I might do and a lot of times it's just depending on what project it is really and that's it so like this you know, this is one of my newer Amy Sloan brushes and I usually get one that's the other thing too is I like to support local businesses so if I go to a new stockist like when I went to St. Louis I went to Ging Gingham Buffalo which will be my new stockist there near Collinsville where I live, I bought a brush. You know, just inconspicuously walked in, walked around, scoped the place out, and then bought a brush. You know, so it's just something I do, and I have a brush, like, addiction. But you can see how big that thing is. And I'll put it next to, since Josie's on here, you see the difference? I'll see. This is just bigger. Bigger. See what I'm saying? So which one is that? What number is that? I don't know. What number is that? Is that what you're looking for? But yeah. This thing's monstrous. And I like it, like I said, I like it for a number of reasons. The spread, the how I get my clean brush stroke free lines and all stuff is how I use it when I use one of those. Let's see. I love how organized your space is more even. Your brushes would love a tour of how you keep everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah. How do you keep your brushes so clean? Um, I don't know. I just clean them. Um, I got, here's my sink. You want to see how my sink is? My sink ain't clean. 
<laughs> and there's my Klingons, my other little shorties, hanging out in some water. Yes, I know they're supposed to be hanging, but I'm lazy, and I haven't hung them on something. I know I just need like a little, one of my daughter's clamp hair clamps and hang them, but I just stuck them in there for right now. I use brushes to brush them out. Um, that kind of stuff. That is much bigger than my big one. Yeah, I think this is your big one, because I got the, when I bought this one that day, this, this was the biggest one that you all had. And I, I don't know the numbers and all that stuff. I just picked whatever one had the biggest size on there. What do you clean them with? Oh, oh just soap and water. Because they're water-based. Unless it's the wax brushes. And the wax brushes get dipped in mineral spirits. And just you know let them soak in that to eat off the wax. And then soap and water too. But sometimes I don't even use soap, to be honest with you. Because like the Klingons, they basically wash themselves. And then the other ones, they don't get completely clean. Here we go, but I'm gonna go back and forth, back and forth. They don't get completely clean like this. Like that's never gonna go back to like that. This I use only for waxing, but this is one of her, the large ones. You, you see it's all down, it's nubbing down slowly but surely. But see how nice and clean that is? Because I only use clear wax on it. And this is how this looks after Napoleonic, I think. And you're never going to get it completely clean. Clean, clean, like, like that. So, you just have to be aware. Like, I probably won't use a white paint with this brush. You know what I mean? So, I'll go over here to this one and use this one here for a white. If I'm going to do a white. So. But, anyways. Yes, that's. The 12, the manufacturer's putting it on a handle for me now so we can identify them. Yeah, it's it's pretty much stained by the paint. I guess that's the way you could call it. But they're, I guess, just make sure you guys know, like, I mean, if you're new, they're never going to get clean clean like they're not going to look like brand new after you use them because like she said i mean it basically will stain the br bristles and then at times like it's super hard to get and especially those big thick ones that i like you know to get them completely 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 like paint free so but just soap and water so josie you're gonna give me a big paint pixie brush i, I want one let me know let me know for sure. I can never have too many brushes. That's that's a problem I have. I know that. I'm okay with that. So anyways, anybody else got any other questions before I jump off here? I will do a whole other video on top coat. I promise. So for the couple of few people that asked about that, I'll do another, I don't know, just live improv 2 thing and I'll post it. Um, cool, cool, cool. So anyways, so stay tuned for the giveaway. Um, probably be towards the end of the month and again we'll have one for local people and we'll have an artist prize with some partnering with wise all again to give away some paint so um but if there's any other questions you know you know where to find me I'm usually on facebook so just hit me up now back to some work i gotta get to hope everybody has a very blessed week and as always Happy painting.